Hello, my name is Dalibor Knish. I am product manager for machine learning cockpit for SAP Business by Design. In this short video, I would like to explain two additional recommendations. First, extension fields. In this course, we use two pre-created extension fields for storing sales code item success predictions. Sales code item status for storing the prediction outcome and sales code item status probability. As you will see in units 12 and 13, these extension fields have to be mapped in prediction run. This is the way how machine learning cockpit knows where to copy prediction results. Now, throughout your exercise, you are supposed to reuse the same fields. You do not have to create them. However, to implement the use cases in your own partner or customer tenants, you will need to create extension fields there. So for those of you who are not familiar with creation of QZ extension fields, let me show you how it can be done. QZ extensions are always created in the UI or the business object where we want to use them. To do so, we need to go to QZ settings, start adaptation mode. And we have to make visible the UI where we want to have them. In this case, it is item level, so we need to select the item. Selection of the right screen section is important because, because each section corresponds to different business objects. So in this case, make sure that you select unnamed table. Then by pressing the plus sign, we can go to the extension fields. And in this pop-up, we first check that we are in the correct business context. This time there's only one, that, but it can be uh, multiple in principle. To create new extensions field, we have to press create new field. I will supply the name first for the prediction outcome and the type right type for the prediction outcome is extended text. That's all that is needed, I can save. The second extension field is to store probability of the prediction. This type, field type must be decimal. Please make sure to specify also correct length, five, two. Now, now we have two extension fields created, but at this moment, they are not visible as yet on the UI. To make them visible, we have to check these two checkboxes. Okay, now we have these two extension fields also visible on the UI, so let's close it. And we have them at the end. However, to make them persistent, you also, you also have to save them and publish them. If it didn't publish the extension fields, upon closing of the adaptation mode, they would be lost. So now I can stop adaptation mode. And in the items at the end, we have permanently created two extension fields. Please note that each business object has multiple views where extension fields can be visible. So a part of this list view, you might want also see extension fields within documents. To be able to see uh, the items, I first need to switch the view to view all any items we see standard structure of the item record however there are no extension fields to make them visible here we again need to go to the adaptation mode again we need to select the right ui and the right uh, ui section
and we see that we are in the right context and the external fields are technically available here. They were just not set to be visible. So we need to activate them here. Quick check. And we see that the external fields are not visible here. But again, we have to save our changes. And make them permanent by publishing them. Now we can close adaptation mode. And we have two external fields created which are ready for use also in machine learning cockpit. Once again, these are the changes that you will need to do in your home partner's tenant or customer tenant. Throughout the uh, OpenSAP course, you will just use existing extension fields. Next topic, type and technical name of data sources. Data sources can be found in business analytics data sources. By default, only data source name is visible and description, but data source type, whether it is supported or not, uh, technical name, these two fields are not uh, by default visible. But we can have them made visible. We can do that in the personalization mode. Please don't mix it with the user settings, adaptation mode is different settings. So we go to the personalization mode and in the list of data source fields is activate and make visible data source type and ID. And then we save the changes. There is no need to publish anything now and we can stop personalization. So now we can also see the type and the ID. This concludes the video. Thank you for your attention. Hello and welcome. My name is Maciej Fuchs and I'm product manager for SAP Business by Design. In this short video, I will demo you on how to create a business user with appropriate user rights for the purpose of our Open SAP course. The same set of information you will find also on our documentation, which we published on the landing page of the course. The process consists of two major steps. In the first one, we will create a user, while in the second, we will equip the user with the appropriate user rights. But first of all, we will need to log in into SAP Business by Design. The login information for the demo tenants you will find in our documentation. I'm choosing Administration 1 with the respective password. As mentioned at the very beginning, um, we will need to conduct two steps. The first step is to create a new employee. For that purpose, we will navigate to the personal administration and we will choose the regular tasks. We will choose the country and hire a new employee. We need to provide an employee ID, first name and the second name. If we are not sure about which employee ID is available, we might also take, check it on the list of employees. Let's get back and let's move to the next step to provide employment information like a hiring date. I will choose the beginning of the year, organization unit, Job title consultant, administrative category non exempt, forty days a week. Once the agreed working hours, jobs, uh, and organization unit is selected, we may move to the next step. 
at the documents, we don't need any documents, and we may review provided information. All the information which needs to be filled, you will find also in the attached documentation. We may finish. Now we can see um, that our employee has been created. We may close the screen. And as mentioned, in the second stop, we will need to uh, provide uh, respective user access rights. For that purpose, we will go for the um, business um, user administration. And we will search for newly created user. Navigate to that user. And we will edit the attributes to assign the new username uh, and the password. Uh, the username is here. The password is here. We can save that one. As you see, the password is right now active. And we can navigate to the um, uh, access rights to assign the respective business role. For that training purposes, we have created a new ROAR MLC Open SAP course, and we are marking the validity of this role. Now we can save and confirm um, the change of the user access rights. Basically, right now, all the task has been completed and the user is um, ready for the exercises provided in the Open SAP course. Now, while we will log off here, we are able to restart the application and logging with the new, newly created user and his initial password. Having said that, I would like to thank you for, the, for watching and welcome you for the exercises with the machine learning cockpit for sub-business by design. Have a good day.